Let's make a confession of faith over our Bibles before we do anything else today and say this with me. This is my Bible. I am what he says I am. I have what he says I have. I can do what he says I can do. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I am about to receive the incorruptible, ever-living Word of God into my life. I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just before uh, I'll give you a message today, it'll be a, quite a short one. Just last week we told you that uh, last Sunday was the last day of our option to purchase Grace Christian Centre. Correct? Yeah? Well, on the Tuesday, we rang the owner and said, you know, our option has run out. Is there any way you would be prepared to extend the option for us? And he said, no. But we will always be open to sensible offers. So in other words, we don't need an option to purchase. If we offer him the right amount of money, he will take it. So we're, we've still got it. It's still our building. We haven't had the money come in yet, but it's still our building. Amen? So rejoice with it that God has done it and he's going to continue to do it until we actually have a copy of the freehold, which I think we're going to put in a, a frame and put it on the wall. Our freehold document. We'll have a copy of it so that everybody can see it. Amen? What a blessing. Not surprisingly, some of the stuff we've sung today and some of the words that have been spoken already today cover this subject. Celebrating one another. Wow, that went down well, didn't it? We realise we're talking about one another. Jesus said in John 13, 33, Little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So I say now to you, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this will all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Jesus is saying to his disciples, when I've gone to heaven, which is going to be quite soon, this is what I want you to do. I want you to love one another like I've loved you. Then everyone will know you're mine. That's what he's saying. I want you to love other people, love one another, like I have loved you, then everyone will know you're mine. And you will be showing people what I am like. Because if we are loving people like he loved us, then we're showing people what Jesus is like. Would you agree with that? And people were saying, oh, show us the Father, show us the Father. And Jesus said, no, no, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And we should be, if we're doing it right, saying, if you want to know what Jesus is like, he's like me. Now I know, I, I may not be as bold as Jesse Duplantis, even though I've got the same hair. But Jesse said, he, somebody, stood up, somebody asked him a question on a plane once, what does Jesus look like? And he stood up in the aisle and he goes, he looks like me. We are made in his image. And if we're loving people like Jesus loved us, we're like a massive billboard for Jesus. You know, you see these massive billboards, you want to know what a, what a car looks like, there's a massive picture of it there and it's price and everything. You want to know what Jesus is looking at? What look like? Look at you. Are you a great example for Jesus? A ex good advertising thing? How, how, you can do, how do you do this in a practical way? Well, a lady we know uh, watched every day. She watched these Christian ladies group, gather together in her street just out in the open and meet one another and give one another a hug. And she saw this a few times and thought, whatever they've got, I want. And she was bold enough one day to approach them and say, what is it that you ladies have got that I haven't got that makes you want to hug on each other and love one another? Like they said, Jesus. I want Jesus then, she said. It's exactly like it's absolute truth. It happened up on the army camp there in, in, Furbank, in Furbank Crescent. So if you live in Furbank Crescent, you can expect God to visit you. 
So how do you do what, what do you do this practically? Well, Romans 12.10 says, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honour giving preference to one another. Brotherly love means accepting that the other Christian you're looking at is also a child of God. That's what brotherly love means. There's nothing special or wonderful or different. It just means you are treating this other person like they're a child of God because they are. Because if we can't show love to God's children, we cannot show it to the world. If you can't even be loving towards a person who is a child of God, who is God in the flesh now, with God inside them and the Holy Spirit inside them, you're not going to love the world. Honouring a person means acknowledging that they too are a fellow Christian and refusing to speak against them. That should be something in our vocabulary. If somebody is a, a, another Christian, we should honour them in such a way that we absolutely refuse to speak ill of them. If a person is doing something really bad, all you can say is, Lord, there's something must be going on in their lives to make them like that, so I'm going to pray to you about it, and I'm not going to tell anybody. That's the key. Don't tell anybody about another person's problems. That's not honouring them. That's not treating them as one of God's children. And putting the other person first means not looking to see what it costs you. Ed Cole once said that love is the desire to benefit others at your own expense because love desires to give. So if you're not, if you're not losing out on something when you're hoping you live it, loving somebody, if you're not losing out on something like your own time, your own effort, your own money, you're doing something for somebody when you could be doing something else, then that's love if you're doing that. God wants us to love. I'm not the greatest example of it, but I am a, a member of the Rotary Club in Warminster. And one of the mottos of Rotary is, others first, self second. If, there's a time, if, there's a, if you can do something for somebody else, or you can stay at home and do nothing, then you do something for somebody else. If you can be of a benefit to another believer, another Christian, someone else in the body of Christ, then do it, no matter what it costs you. This is what Jesus is saying here. But we have to be quite careful sometimes, because Galatians 5.13 says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. We've been talking about being set free this morning, about the chains being broken. We're all set free. Only do not use that liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. When you're free and you can do what you want, then do what you want for somebody else. Don't just do it for yourself. Through love through the love that's been placed in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, serve one another. Serve one another. You know, the Bible says that we should, we should wait on the Lord. Do you know, and sometimes people say we should wait on the Lord, like just hang around, and just wait a minute and go, we're waiting on the Lord. I'm just waiting on the Lord. He'll do it in a minute. I'm waiting on the Lord. No, waiting on the Lord means standing there quite, you know, uprightly, with a napkin over your arm, saying, yes, Lord, anything else, Lord? Can I get you anything else? Is that okay, what I've just given you? Can I do something else for you? Waiting on him. We should wait on one another. Is there anything I can do for you? Anything I can do for you? I get, I get criticised by people for doing too much in the church. I'm sorry, I'm a servant. I don't have any choice. I'm a servant here. I'm the biggest servant here. And I'm doing it deliberately. And I'm not bragging. God told me to do that. I am a servant here. That's what I'm here for. I am the lowest of the low. I'm a servant here. And you are all greater than I am. That's how I see it. That's how I see it. Because you need something doing for you. Right at this moment, God wants a word to be given to you. So here I'm doing it. I'm the servant. In Jesus' name. See... But to serve one another, first you have to be around one another. You can't be just on your own and only stay at home and come to church and go home, come to church, go home, come. It doesn't work. Because if you're not around other Christians, 
how we are going to serve them. God wants us to serve one another. So to obey God's word in this scripture, you have to fellowship more. Now some of you say, well I'll find that quite difficult. Then change the way your life is. Just do it differently. Change the way you do things. Make an opportunity. Find one day in the week, every week, when you can go and fellowship with somebody. And not just fellowship to chat and natter and, and gossip. Fellowship over the words. See how you can bless that person. See what you can do to make their life better. And the same again in Hebrews 10.24. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. What's this day approaching? That's the day Jesus comes back. Well, we can see by the signs it's getting close. It's getting close. So as we get close to that, all the more we should be doing this. Let's consider one another. If you don't fellowship with other people, you can't really consider them. And if you don't consider a person, how can you stir them up in love? How can you stir them up in good works? You can't. Now here's a test. Now I know some of you won't will be disobedient, because God said to me, they won't all do it. I said, it's okay, you told me to do it, I'll do it anyway. I want you to have a look around the room now. Have a look around the room. Okay. Is there anyone you've just seen whose name you don't know? Is there anybody here who you have never spoken to? How can you consider that person? How can you consider that person? How can you stir them up? You don't even know who they are. God wants us to get to know, but you don't have to know everybody's name. I do. I make it my point. I've done it deliberately, on purpose. I work at it. I make it important for me to do it. Don't I, George? <laughs> point you to Alex. I know that God wants every one of us to do that. It, it takes effort. It takes time. It doesn't come automatically. And, but I'll tell you what does come automatically. And I, I find this easier nowadays. I used to find it really hard. When I'm, I meet somebody say, I have forgotten your name. I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name. And the person says, that's no problem. And they tell me their name. The most embarrassing thing is for you to think, oh, they won't like me. They'll think there's something wrong with me if I've forgotten their name. No, they won't. They'll think you're human. Because they forget people's names as well. Okay? So don't worry about that. So there's some people you might have to talk to afterwards and say, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. And ask them, say, I'm sorry. It's my fault. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Tell me your name, please. And you can make sure they know your name. It's important for us to do that. If you can't do that, you can't fellowship with them, you can't consider them, you can't encourage them. Because in Galatians 6.2, the Lord says, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. To bear one another's burdens, you have to have been chatting and have a listen to find out what the person's burdens are. And if you listen to the person and you find out what their burdens are and try and help them with that burden, you fulfill the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? It's the one we read in the first place. Love one another like I love you. And then people will know you're Christians. He still wants us advertising Christianity. I want you to imagine, I mean there have been some ridiculous laws passed recently ridiculous rules passed, and yes I will say it, by some judges who ought to be defrocked or whatever because they're trying to go against democracy. That's my opinion and the opinion of most of the people in the country. Uh, and then they're criticising that the, the Lord Chancellor didn't, didn't condemn the newspapers enough for saying that. Well she didn't condemn them because they were right. But if tomorrow another law was passed and it was against the law for you to be a Christian. 
tomorrow. That's it. Tomorrow, it's against the law to be a Christian. Ask yourself this question. Would they knock on my door? Would they even knock on my door? And if they did, would they arrest me? And if they arrested me, would there be enough evidence to convict me? Would there be enough evidence in my life to convict me of being a Christian? Well, I know you're a Christian because I saw you doing this. And then you went there, and then you did that. And then every time you had a chance, you were over at this person's house helping them. And every time you were down there, you're always telling them about Jesus and how much he loves them and want to pray for them because they're sick. You're guilty, mate. You're going down. But if they looked at you and thought, nothing, can't see any evidence at all of you being a Christian, you can go on then. I wouldn't want to be in that second group. I think I would be convicted. But if I wasn't convicted, I'd say, what's the matter with you? Why are you picking me up then? You should be, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be a Christian as well. God wants us advertising Christianity. He says in Romans 13.8, and this is really key, this one, Oh, no one anything except to love one another, for he that loves one another has fulfilled the law. Everything that's written in the Old Testament about the law, you fulfill that by loving somebody. You know, in the Old Testament, it was against the law to kill somebody. Do you know that? That's fairly normal. But you could kill somebody and be guilty of murder if you'd built a house with steps or a ladder or something leading up to the top of the house and there was no guardrail around it and the person fell off and died. You'd be guilty of murder because you didn't take care to make sure that people were being looked after. We've got to look after one another. But it says, oh no one anything. That means don't keep score as to who has blessed you and who hasn't blessed you. If you want to know who to bless, bless the one who never blesses you. Bless the one who never says anything nice about you. Bless the one you've never spoken to and you don't even know their name. Bless them. Should I also bless the ones who are always doing good for me? Yes, but put them at the back of the list. Do the ones who you know, don't contact, the ones you need to be able to get in their lives and help them in Jesus' name. Just love them regardless of personal cost. That way, you are completely filling all that Jesus has asked of you to love one another. In 1 John 4, 12, it says, No one has seen God at any time. Well, I assume that's still true, unless anybody's actually seen him. No? Okay, this scripture is still true then. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected or matured in us. How would you like the amazing, self-sacrificing love of God to be perfected in your life? Would anybody like that? Amen. Amen. How do you get that? You love other people. He said, if you love one another, this is what happens. If you... Go away. Go away. Don't speak ill of anybody. No matter what, there's always a reason, see? Don't say anything negative about anybody. There's always a reason. I love me as well. Hallelujah. See, if you want this love of God in your life, if you want this love of God in your life, then just, that's it. If you want the love of God in your life, you have to love other people. You have to love them. Why am I not answering that phone? Because I'm doing something for you. And I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing for you to answer somebody else's message, which I can get back to later. Amen? You are important. You are important. And finally, in Colossians 3, verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, Have it, uh, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, 
singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. He says, let the word of Christ, allow it to happen. Allow this to happen. It's a choice. You choose to let the word of God work in your life and fill you with his wisdom richly. You have to read the word of God to be able to do all this stuff. You have to study the Word of God and above all, I think sometimes more importantly than reading the Bible for yourself, fellowship over the Word of God with other people. Talk to other people about scriptures you're not sure about. Talk to other people about scriptures you love and encourage them too. Because you are full of His wisdom. He has filled you with His wisdom. So you are wise enough to realise that this is a very important word. And this is a word which is going to let other people see that you're one of God's people because you are going around loving people who don't deserve it, like Jesus did. You know Jesus loved you? Did you deserve it? Of course not. Nobody deserved the love that Jesus poured out on us. So go and give some love to other people and find out if you can answer the questions I asked before. Is there anybody here whose name you don't know? You need to find that answer. And is there anybody here you haven't spoken to before? You could answer that by going and talking to them. But I believe this is a good message for us today. And it wants us, it, God wants us to be in a place where if somebody looks at us, they will see something different about them. That person's a Christian. We've been in places before and somebody's come up to us and said, you're Christians, aren't you? And we go, yeah, but I said, so am I. I thought you were, recognised it. What did they recognise? They recognised the love of God. Nothing about us. It's the love of God in us. And God wants us to be doing that today. So let me encourage you today. Go and talk to somebody and tell them you love them and say, oh, by the way, what's your name? Amen? In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I should have seen that coming. That was a message from the opticians reminding me of my appointment tomorrow afternoon. There you go. <laughs>